Okay, six out of the eight of these are going to be available to uh, Pearson Farmbro fans. So we sold two of these uh, just to some neighbors and some people from church. The other six are, like I said, outside, but it was kind of too windy. They're going to be available through a website called Farmer Grade. Another farmer we know who shares his life on YouTube. On YouTube, he sells pork through that, and then he has some other beef farmers. So we're going to become one of his uh, beef farmers. The steaks and hamburger will be available. Uh, we're pretty excited for that, and uh, we're excited for the butcher date in May. You guys can buy it though before um, before the May date is here. It's on for pre-sale at FarmerGrade.com. Uh, there's different boxes. You can look at the inventory of what's in each, what's in each box, and uh, and choose what uh, what you think fits your meat needs for uh, your family. And there might be some pork product on there you could add there as well. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in Central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. So last video we showed moving the shed and I just wanted to show it all uh, fastened down now. We had some of these uh, stress casts uh, laying around which um, are manufactured um, just here locally. You can, you can buy like the extras from them. So that's what we used as the foundation. We didn't pour concrete. Um, and then over this past weekend, it was supposed to get really windy. Uh, I, I got it bolted down. That's the status of the shed that we got set down and moved up here. And it's nice to have another. This was the only building we had before on, at my house, so. Okay, I'm running these steers through my uncle's chute that has a scale. Uh, this one weighs. 11.48 so instead of a tub he has a budget we got sun in the forecast we got two open pins next to each other open for fence line weaning I already got a bunch of 10 calves off and then I got to separate these three cows off and I'll have even more cows are sorted off I sorted a couple that I knew I was going to cull I'm not even going to prank to check them. I just knew that I was going to cull them. But then these ones are going back to the pen that they'll be fence line weaned. And we'll prank check them in a few days or whatever. We weaned the majority of our fall calves today. They get to eat at the bunk today without their moms pushing them out of the way. Warm and warm. Big piles at this place. I'm going to walk it straight, ain't out of the wind. Getting some calves in from Missouri tonight. It's like, uh, it's like 3, 3 a.m. Another load of heifers going to town today to be sold. This is down at mom and dad's house where we keep all the heifers and also the cows and calves are over here. So they're here too. Go on heifers. Shipping today. Come on, get the last one. Yep, yep. These are the ones Greg and I sorted up for uh, grazing wheat that Greg and I did. I'm feeding them today. 40 new ones to add to the ones I got from Harrington this week. They came pretty early in the night. 
Uh, they came at 10.30, but I was already asleep. So last night, it got down to like 13 or 14 degrees. So not exactly ideal for the wheat that's really been greening up and getting big, especially this is like our earliest wheat. Part of the reason for split application of nitrogen, I was kind of thinking it would help slow it down, but most of our wheat is a lot smaller, but even still with how warm it was and then how quickly it got cold, I'm, I'm a little worried about it. Um, the growing point is definitely above ground. So time will tell if we had enough insulation or enough ground heat to uh, keep it from getting damaged all the way down to 13 or I was ready for a good wheat year. And I just put all that nitrogen on it. So that's that's one of the hardest things around here is when you you push hard to get all the rest of the nitrogen and you pay all that money to put all the nitrogen uh, out here thinking you're going to get a rain over the weekend and you don't get a rain and then the night last night got like five degrees colder than they originally had said a couple days ago i don't know what the the forecast was yesterday but it got all the way down to 13 i thought it was only supposed to get down to 18 so basically we got the opposite of what we hoped and thought but as far as to wait until after this weekend to put on the nitrogen, that would have been kind of risky too, because uh, if it would have rained, you know, it would have been perfect timing, and so it's just one of those things. Okay, I fed these light cattle real good this morning. Um, some of these are the replacement heifers from the fall group, plus a bunch of light calves that I thought didn't really need to go on silage yet. They could just go and eat some wheat. And so we're putting these on a wheat. It's on the corner of the big pivot there. They have to make it around one corner where there's some wheat to the side and then they're gonna go turn to the left around the pond. So that'll be their water source. So I'm really hoping they just make an easy turn to the left. So Nathan parks the sidekick to block him from going down that way. We got my pickup and the feed wagon and some weeds helping make a wall. So let's hope they just walk right on down along this pen and out to the left. They got the lagoon here and the pond over there. I'm just standing here making sure they don't come trying to blast through this hot wire. Okay, they're realizing that they can eat what's growing on the ground. So that's what cattle do. This is not their main forage resource, but this is the pen that we have that we can keep them trapped and then they'll go out on that wheat that's right there on the horizon. But I want to let them find the, the barriers of all of this couple acres before I let them open to the wheat. That way they can find the fence of one, feel comfortable, then find the fence of the other. Going around the uh, pasture fence here, this is where we're going to put the spring pear, so it needs to have best fence. Um, I got Nathan, Nathan offered to help this year, um, but really all that's happened is it's just been a nice windy office for him to answer phone calls. Talking about his planter, his precious planter, but you know, at least he's driving the sidekick along while I do all the work. I'm working some more cattle today. Some of these were ballers. Ooh, I want to run away. Some of these were ballers, so we're giving them therapies. We haven't really been doing that much, but we are there. Come on, hey, hey, hey. We we really try not to buy bulls. And we tell, I mean, our order buyer doesn't usually buy bulls, but every now and then a few slip in. But I'm hoping he got these for cheaper. This is my first spring burn down. Uh, starting with the corn ground that will be planted here in two weeks to a month depending on weather and rain. And this is one of the fields we had the uh, forage blend on so there's some green radishes out there. Uh, there's a pretty good amount of uh, cheat, pinbit, and mustard just like what that was in the wheat. So we're getting it cleaned up and then we're putting down uh, some residual uh, so that uh, when we plant, um, then this ground will hopefully uh, hold clean 
until uh, the corn has some height to it and then we'll put another residual uh, to kind of layer them. So I've tried doing uh, corn with just one herbicide pass before. It really uh, doesn't hold around here. And then I've also done, and I did one field this year of fall. I did, I sprayed in the fall and then it stays clean. And uh, then you put your residual on once the corn's up. And that, that works pretty good if you don't have a lot of weed pressure. Um, this year with this, uh, kind of the covers. We didn't we didn't really have a window to do a uh, fall application And so I'm gonna do it this way with the with the two passes, but I'm pretty confident It'll work pretty good. The cheat is is really easy to kill <laughs> But it takes a lot of moisture so you can't really leave it too long um, Like I don't want the cheat to get big in the next two weeks and then if you don't get rain your corn might not even come up. So this is in the bottom where there's the most uh, residue left over. And uh, we'll plant, plant right into that. Uh, these, the fields I'm starting on are pretty close to the feedlot. So this will most likely be the corn we chop. Uh, this bottom we might pick because usually it, it doesn't run out of water because it has a pond up there that so we'll see but should be a good cornfield there's a dirty window we're taking this group out i think it's mostly steers but we're going to sort it heifers and steers these cattle are about the same size as our fall calves Okay, we are done sorting. Um, these are the heifers. These are the steers. Heifers are going back to the same pen they just came from, pen 4B. Steers are going to be bumped up to pen 6. Hungry cows. Going down layers of the bale. Oh, don't drop it. Don't drop it on the ground. It's a Saturday afternoon. We are rolling corn. We are working some calves. Okay, so these cows have already had their calves. We set it up to where only the calves could run out onto my dad's yard. So they have a nice clean space to run. Cows gotta stay in this pen. There's a bunch of them now. Bunch of calves over here. This is the front half. Got some cows today that are gonna be Cool cows. Two of those are from the first group of cows I ever purchased in 2019. They raised five good calves for me. I'm gonna sell them for more than what I bought them for back then. In the last, I think, two years, the cat, their calves have sold for more than what I bought the cows for. So they've been a good investment. Defects now, they're 10 years old. One of them has lost a calf. Another one of them has got a limping leg. They're just kind of nearing the end of their, their productive cow life. I like the way cows load on a trailer. Hey, hey! Shh! Hey, what? I've never seen one like that up close before, like not at a zoo. There'll be some trophies before we get done today, guys. You get to watch them here. 100 times, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar. You're going to get a bumpy 100 mil high. What's up, 108? 8? Time to do some sorting. Okay, those were the last five that didn't make the cut. We got two loads to haul in. Pretty good, pretty good sized ones here. So it's kind of chilly when we started. It's a real nice sunny day now. Look through pens nine and ten and uh took the top two loads off now we're putting them back in pen nine and ten doing a little windy day maintenance on the sprayer these end nozzles they get they're always the ones that uh, get into something like a tree or the ground i'm rewiring this it was loose i didn't want it to cause trouble when i really need it so and then i'm hoping to get it greased okay i found some more straw uh, at the back of one of these fields. 
my dad missed a load. Um, but I'm getting it now. Get this last bale on there. Uh, two loads to haul into the sale today. Uh, and it's a farm, and it's a local farm show. So we always try to stop by there. Sometimes there's some some cool speakers to listen to and browsing around the equipment, of course. Um, my dad and I are gonna try to stagger, like one of us is gonna, I'm gonna go in, haul the first load, maybe buy some calves. My dad's gonna come get the semi, leave a pickup for me, and he's gonna haul the second load, and then hopefully I'd have time to look at the farm show. And then we have to do chores, and then there's something else at 4.30 in the afternoon, which is kind of right during chore time, but it's just gonna be a really packed day. But I'm, I've got the cattle fed. The ones that I fed very first, which is the ones we are going to sell, they're just about getting cleaned up with their ration, so I'm gonna get ready to haul them in, haul this first load in this morning. Okay, out of that, past this gate. It was too much for pen 10, so it'll actually be pen 10 and 4A. This, this pen's gonna sell too, and then we'll have 4A open. We'll get some new cattle this week. Okay, I got two in the jail, and I got eight up front. All right, there, about half an hour to the sale. They're loading up pretty good. They're about 23 on the top. Get these front ones moving in there. Hey! This is the hey, smallest compartment besides the jail, so it only holds six. Hey! Hey! So I came back to get the checks, and it was just trucks. Trucks, trucks, trucks. I had a meeting at the banker. The banker had kind of like a market real estate meeting. And now there's just, I was glad we got loaded when we did. There's, we had to wait on two trucks before loading out. There's four in line plus the two loading out right now. I gotta get home. Hopefully I'm in time, home in time to do my kid's bath. There's 80 out there from Salina and 30 more coming from El Dorado later tonight. Okay, we sorted pin five this morning. Peppers and steers, mostly steers. We just had to get some peppers off. And uh, now we're putting pin three out into pin five. They're ready to start transitioning on the girl one. I can have to sit here patiently while we sorted up three, three pins. Two of them are really small pins. Um, now I'm ready to feed. So the last day I worked, it was like lower 60s. That was really nice. And I went to Iowa with Greg yesterday, and it was freezing cold up there. It was snowing. Um, I mean, it wasn't freezing cold, but it was cold for March and cold for being 60 the day before. And I came home. It's like Iowa came with me. It's like it's like 20, well, maybe 30. I think it's 30s, uh, but it's kind of a wet day of cold. But there's some warm the rest of the other parts of the week. But anyways, uh, wind's whipping through me. I'm not wearing enough clothes. Okay, we tagged two more. Tag number 49, number 32. Their moms are right on the other side of this fence. Like, what are you doing with my babies? One out of here, Kevies. I was trying to squirm away. Now he's just fine. But yeah, that one's a heifer and the one up there is a bull. Okay, I'm wanting to get a count on these ones. These are the later born ones. You can see the impact down the row of what's been fertilized on the left and what's not been fertilized on the right. And we just put on some extra extra go on this triticale here to get some more tonnage off of it. Whereas the job of this side, the triticale is just kind of to pull nutrients out of the ground and work it, make it more um, readily available for the beans that'll go in here. Okay, so Nathan fixed something on my uh, feed wagon again. I parked it in there uh, right before lunch, and by the time I got back to it, he uh, he'd already had the the bearing off and the new 
well, I think we use the same as the old chain, but put a new bearing on there, holding the chain together. So uh, we won't have to worry about that wearing out on my feed wagon anymore. Thanks, Nathan. I didn't show any of it, but I fenced a little bit of this uh, wheat cover crop. We're gonna turn some white calves out on. Okay, we sorted up a group of heifers. Dad and I, it's a windy day. Wind chill was the coldest we've had in over a month. The wind chill was 12 this morning. I believe we got 65. Dad might be counting one more time. Okay, I've been rolling corn. Now I'm ready to shut it down. It's a maintenance day for the uh, payloader. I greased the loader. I This got really dusty uh, rolling corn yesterday. 40-50 did, so I blew it off. I'm gonna help Nathan with one thing, moving his water trailer around the yard, and then he's gonna help me with one thing, fencing. We thought we were done grazing, um, but now I'm deciding to fence some of that wheat out there. So I'll, I'm gonna help him for a little bit, he's gonna help me for a little bit. Have a good day. Matt Harrington today. Got some nice calves in there. Not a full load by any means. Okay, we got four or five left there, six left in there, and uh, we'll be done with these 50. So some of these calves from Harrington were kind of noisy last night, but they're nice looking cattle. Hey guys, if you were watching our vlog uh, from a week or so ago, uh, we were when we were top dressing the weed up here for the second time and I was checking the alfalfa, I was talking about weevil. I'm out here checking this alfalfa again. It's uh, definitely changed. So this is why you gotta hop on it as soon as it starts warming up. Cause I can go fluff this around now and uh, there's all these little things crawling around and then there's two worms three four five I mean they're everywhere they're everywhere that day I was here they were probably down the ground because it had been cold and then they come up and they will just be hammering this stuff but you can almost already kind of see the white hue to it because they're eating so much so I'm gonna I'm gonna come get this sprayed first thing because these things will they'll eat just around the clock and they'll just hammer an alfalfa field. It's not supposed to get below 40 tonight, so they will stay up and at them. When we haul, haul hay in the winter, you can see it's greener where these, these tracks are. Driving on alfalfa will crush the eggs, break the eggs over the winter. The alfalfa will just look more whole leaves where the tracks are. And people have tried to roll whole fields. It's hard to get enough pressure because a land roller, you know, is made to just push rocks in the ground. Um, but people have experimented with that. But uh, an ongoing battle. And every year's a little different. But they're definitely bad here right now. So I know what I need to do. Well, yesterday was my uh, one-year-old son's birthday. Today is his party. It's a Saturday. But we got some weevil to kill first, and tomorrow's Easter, so... Good job, sprayer. The, uh, the weevil are trying to eat all of our alfalfa. The weed is kind of froze. It's kind of disheartening, but... Uh, you know, we went to the a Good, good Friday service last night. Um, they always perform uh, the St. Matthew's Passion, according... Or, written by Bach and uh, so it's like an orchestra and a choir and my dad sings in it and then they do another one um, on Sunday that Greg sings in that too and I've sang it before a whole bunch of us take our turns singing in it but um, it was good uh, the Easter season is always a really a fun time for us uh, both growing up and now and uh, you know no matter what's happening in farming uh, we know uh, that our future is secure in Jesus. So um, it's a good reminder of that every year and hopefully we live like that every day. So uh, not that we don't get discouraged and um, a little down at times, but uh, we try to we try to remind ourselves of that. Because everything
The bugs love the alfalfa. Hope it rains next week. That would help. <laughs> that yeah. Yeah. She says. I found a really cute yeah. one yesterday. Yeah. Of, well, Ada got into it. I think I showed you that. And I found one that um, Lundy had made. I like Colton had made it. Colton with my left hand. Colton with my left Right, and is this like your balance beam? Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.